Talia, in trying to understand what free will is all about, the concept of agency is important, that we are agents. What, right. what does that mean, and how does it help us understand free will? Uh, I think the sense of agency is really part and parcel of free will, that you uh, feel like you are the conscious decider, that you can choose among several options, and, and you're making that decision in consciousness. That's a very, being an agentic self is what it means to be free. So you, you said that an agentic self has, is a self that has agency. So how does that work? I mean, what does it mean to be a self that has agency? Um, it's, a, it's a good question. I think that um, we feel like our, ourselves ha have a power to choose. Mm -hmm. And maybe we don't always feel like we're making choices. We're deciding. We're intending. Um, but we have that capacity. That's part of being um, a free self. Mm. This is this is the compelling experience of our um, of our subjective lives. Okay, so it's really important to us, and people who talk about free will and the agency that we have as as uh, as uh, beings to do things. Yes. Um, and people are trying to explore this. Now, you have a research project, part of this big questions in free will project that is going to use hypnosis? That's right. Uh, how's that going to work? Um, well, hypnosis is an excellent tool that is just really um, coming into its own in cognitive neuroscience. I think for a long time, it's got this sort of checkered history of being part of a stage show, you know, circus act, black magic. And so science wasn't going to touch it with a 10-foot pole. And then with the advent of neuroimaging, we started to see, oh, this is a real thing. It's an altered state of consciousness. It's something that's happening in the brain that we can study scientifically and utilize, exploit. Because what is great about hypnosis is that you can hypnotize someone to do a behavior that would just unfold as it would normally, but they lack agency for that behavior. So they're creating it, but they don't have the feeling of authorship of that action. And we're really interested in what's that authorship feeling doing, if anything. Which is free will. Which is free will. Okay. So what is your experiment and how is it going to work? Well, uh, the experiment um, is essentially the same as Benjamin Libet did in the early 80s, which is to get people to do a voluntary action like uh, a finger raise whenever they feel like it. And what he found was that you get this ramp up of neural activity before you're even aware that you want to move your finger, and then you, get, you become consciously aware that you're about to move your finger and then you move it. And so the question has always been, well, what's this becoming aware all about? So the question is, what is that thing prior to your conscious activity? That's right. That's right. What's it doing? Um, is it that that's all you need and you becoming aware of what you're about to do isn't really doing anything, <laughs> yeah. right? Um, that's at least um, Patrick Haggard's view, my view, Hakuan Law's view, that uh, it's really coming too late. We're, bec we're becoming aware too late in the stream for it to be causal. Um, Which and yet is the we core evidence it why free will may be an illusion. That's, it's the core evidence, and yet we can't really rule out um, that there's no ca causal role of this thing called W, this conscious will um, that Libet assigned the, uh, the letter W. So what is that moment doing, if anything? And so far we've suggested it was probably not doing much. But we can't rule out. So let's, but if we take it out of the equation, if we take that feeling of conscious will out um, and hypnotize someone to do an, an action, what happens? Where, what does that feeling give us, if anything? Would the action still progress as normally? So what are you going to do? I mean, pretend I'm the subject. Okay. Okay. So you, <laughs> you come in and... Um, I tell you, okay, we're going to do an experiment, um, and uh, I want you just to um, look at this cue and do some uh, visual task, and maybe we do a few practice trials of that. But then I uh, say, now we're going to do some hypnosis. I hypnotize you um, to raise your finger uh, whenever you feel like it, but you're not going to be aware that you're raising your finger. Hmm. The main neuroscientific evidence against free will is this electrocortical activity that you get before you make an action that, that starts uh, one to two seconds ahead of time before you make a seemingly 
spontaneous action, and a long time you know, before you become consciously aware that you're going to move. And uh, so, of course, because you become consciously aware before you move, even though that happens really late in the stream of events, in terms of the neural events, uh, we think it's too late to be doing anything causal, but we can't rule it out because it's there. So the basic idea with what we want to do is use hypnosis to take away this uh, conscious awareness that you're about to move and see, do you still move if, you're, if you don't know you're about to do it? And does the neural activity look the same? I.e., Can you get rid of that uh, becoming aware that you're about to move and does anything change? If nothing changes, then it suggests that becoming aware that you're about to move isn't really instrumental to your movement. And it would, it would signal something even stronger, the radical idea that the conscious feeling that you have is what's called an epiphenomenon. It's the froth on the wave. It looks That's like right. it's doing something, but it has absolutely no causative effect That's because right. you've now teased it apart. That's right. From the feeling, from the effect. That's right. That's right. It could just be, you know, the heat on a light bulb. The mm -hmm. heat doesn't cause the light to come on. Mm -hmm. um, it just seems to occur at the same time. If you can get rid of the heat, uh, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to get rid of this uh, awareness that you're about to move and see, um, does it disrupt motion? Does it disrupt, disrupt the electrocortical activity in the brain? Or is it really not doing and therefore, what were the implications of that research? Um, if, if it doesn't seem to change things uh, in terms of um, planning and executing a movement, then the question is, well, what is it doing? Why is it there? And maybe we have to look elsewhere in the brain. Maybe there's um, somewhere else to look for it, but, but that isn't, um, free will isn't there. Um, if, we if we show the opposite, that uh, it does change things, we don't really get the movement, uh, or the um, neural activity looks completely different, then it is doing something, and we need to take that into account, and maybe I need to revise my strong stance. That free will is an illusion. Yeah, maybe, yeah.